Should you take psychedelics for anxiety and depression? This is Radical Self-Respect with Jared Mello. I wanted to go over this today because I've been seeing a lot of people talk about it. There's been posts about it. Joe Rogan talks about it all the time. Tim Ferriss talks about it. Jordan Peterson talks about it. Lex Friedman talks about it. Everywhere you look, Ron White talks about ayahuasca and his ceremonies he did in Central or South America. Everyone talks about it. And some people say things like, oh, this psychedelic cured my anxiety, depression, or OCD. And here's the thing. I have no issues with people taking psychedelics. However, I want to put a couple disclaimers out there. And I've indulged in several psychedelics. I've not tried all of them. There are certain things like ayahuasca that I would like to try, but I have not yet. And but I want people to understand Having the intention or the expectation that a psychedelic will cure your anxiety, depression, or OCD, I do not think that's a good expectation to go into, to have going into a psychedelic experience. I think it should be more like we have an intention of an issue that we're trying to get guidance on, or we just remain open to what the experience may teach us. And then we got to follow through on whatever we learn, right? The experience itself without follow through, I don't think will be nearly as beneficial. And there's a Tim Dillon skit where he says, you know, I know all these people that do shrooms and other psychedelics all the time, but they never seem to have the spiritual epiphanies and awakenings that they are supposed to. And yes, I've seen that too. We all have known people that have tripped on many different things, done psychedelics, and then at the end of the day, they're still a garbage human. Yeah, we've all seen that too. So it's not just a psychedelic experience that will change someone, I do not think. However, if someone claims and says, hey, I took this psychedelic and I no longer have anxiety or depression, I'd say, great, I'm happy it worked for you in that way. They did not work for me in that way, that's for sure. And I do not think it's good to set up people to have that expectation that it will cure them. If it happens to, and for some reason it jolts the neurotransmitters or the spiritual parts of our body into jolting out of it, so be it. Great. But I don't think that's the proper expectation to have. Now, I know there's a lot of people doing things like ketamine treatments now. I have done that, and I did notice there was some neurotransmitter stimulation for a little bit after that, but I also wouldn't call that a cure, and I didn't really like the feeling of that thing anyway. But I would say going into any psychedelic experience, be open and try to do it with intent, preferably asking for guidance on a particular issue we may be struggling with. I think that's the appropriate frame to go in. I want to steer people away from the thought that, oh, it will cure you. Now, I don't think that's the right way to, to frame the scenario. It's be open and ask for guidance and see what the experience will treat you. Now, I've heard some people say microdosing with certain things, psychosyllabin, that's really helped them. And as I think of all of these things, supplements, prescription drugs, or whatever it is, if something helps you, I am all for that. I'm not going to tell you what you're doing is wrong if it's actually helping your life. If microdosing helps your life, amazing. I'm all for it. And pretty soon I'd like to interview a couple people that maybe have taken ayahuasca, people who microdose, uh, people who have taken it for certain things, and I would love to get their perspective on it. Now, to the dark sides of this, Sam Harris mentions this part, but he said people that have issues, maybe schizophrenics, and maybe they can't even tolerate the slightest tug of their sanity, I think is his exact phrasing. But they need to be careful with these kinds of things because, yeah, if someone's not stable initially and they do these kinds of things, they could go off the deep end a little bit. Now that's not going to be a majority experience, that's just for people that are already struggling with a pretty severe mental illness. 
for them, I would say, use extreme caution, if at all, right? The other thing I like, I see a lot of is people who have a lot of cluster B traits, like narcissists in particular, they often gravitate to the old ayahuascas and shroom experiences. And here's the thing about that. Then you'll see them do the old spiritual narcissism techniques where they all try to out unego everyone. It's kind of crazy to see, but that's kind of what I see a lot. They do the, oh, who can, they have a competition of who can be the most egoless. Think about the irony of that for a minute. The competition of who can be the most egoless. Slightly ridiculous. But I know narcissists in my own life. They were big into drugs and psychedelics. And let me tell you, it did not really have any lasting changes for them. They were still gaslighters. They were still abusive. They still did their routines. And perhaps when they were on the drug, they had some momentary empathy for a change. And they would look back at the experience and think how awesome it was and how they had that momentary empathy. But going back to their everyday life, not as much of that empathy transferred over. Now again though, anything we learn on a psychedelic experience, there must be follow through, right? Because without the actions of the day to day, there is no just like, boom, take ayahuasca, you're cured of any ailments you have. No, 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 no. That is not how it works. That's not how a psychedelic experience works. It's more like you get guided in the right direction. And any lasting change will be because of different actions, 99 times out of 100. Like I said, without the follow through, without the changes in behaviors and actions, a lot of the psychedelic experiences are for naught. Right? We can have all of the transformative thoughts and learn and have all these experiences while on something, but without that follow through, it's not nearly as beneficial. Now, someone who microdoses consistently, that is a change in behavior. That is something that's actually affecting your neurotransmitters in your body every day. So I can see how that could have a lasting effect. But I think what happens to a lot of people is they get that experience and they don't follow through with it. And that's why you don't see them have like the changes. Now, for someone that takes it and they say, yes, it cured me of my anxiety and depression, I would say, awesome. I'm glad it worked for you. Like I said, I'm not going to say they are wrong, but I would just caution others to not think it will do the same for you. Right? Don't have that expectation because as they always say, to expect is to be disappointed. And I don't want that to happen to people. But go in with an open mind. So if you're struggling with anxiety and depression, you think, you know, maybe I should try magic mushrooms for it. Maybe I should try an ayahuasca ceremony for it. You know what I would say? I would say, okay, ask for guidance on how to handle your anxiety and depression and then take them and then see what happens. See what the spirits of those plants and medicines, where they point you to, where do they guide you to? Do they guide you to change the behavior? Do they guide you to neurotransmitter support in the form of supplements or hormonal changes or just lifestyle changes or spirituality changes? Does it push you towards religion? Does it push you towards yoga and meditation? But be open, open to the suggestions. I mean, I wouldn't say like, yes, go in with the expectation that it'll cure you. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Ask for the guidance and then see what happens. That would be my shaman-like suggestion for you all. So what I'd like to do here is, if you have experiences with psychedelics, please comment your experiences below. Did they help you with your anxiety, depression, or OCD? Did they lead you and to have some sort of spiritual uh, transformation? Did you get taught anything where you wanted to, or you learned new things and it pushed you in the direction to make behavior and lifestyle changes? I'd love to hear all of it. And I think it'd be great to get these experiences out there because they're important. And like I said, I'm for anything that could possibly help in any way. And I think, these are powerful things though. They are not to be trifled with casually. They are powerful. And if we go in with intent, the things we can learn can be spectacular. And they can really be life-changing 
if we follow through in particular. And I'm all for the things that can give us these kinds of insights. Now, weed is not a psychedelic, mind you. It is more of a, it's a hallucinogen. Officially, it's a hallucinogen. But I'll tell you, from what I hear people say about ayahuasca, I do get similar experiences where I get like an extreme self-consciousness, where I get the ego mirror, and I smoke, and I'll just be taught, uh, and I'll be shown all the ways I could be doing better in my life, how I'm being a piece of crap, how I could be more loving. And it's a painful experience, but it's also a helpful experience, because I'm shown how I could be doing better. And I've heard people say things like, oh, you're doing the wrong strain. It's got to be um, sativa or it's got to be indica. And it's like, well, honestly, they've all given me that extreme self-consciousness. The THC period has given me that extreme self-consciousness. Now, it's not something I would do recreationally, but for that teaching purposes, to learn things about myself, the plant marijuana is able to give me some of those insights. And granted, it's not technically a psychedelic. It's more of a hallucinogen. But it has some of the same properties when I take it. Because again, I've had severe anxiety in the past, maybe even on the spectrum. So when I do it, if I were to smoke, I get extreme self-consciousness, extreme anxiety. And I get pointed to all of the ways I should be improving in my life. So once in a while, I do think that is beneficial. I did not get those experiences when I used to do shrooms, I did not get that. I did not get that a painful. It was actually more pleasant. And you do kind of learn some things. Now, I haven't done that kind of thing in a while. And maybe I'm due for a good trip. And I think Michael Pollan, or no, Terrence McKenna. Terrence McKenna wrote, hey, you think you're a tough guy, huh? You think you're a tough guy? Take five grams of mushrooms while blindfolded and see how tough you are. And Sam Harris, he made a whole video about his experience taking shrooms. Five grams of shrooms with a blindfold on. And the way he explains it's really fascinating. He says, you have the proverbial thimble. And all you can take back from your experience of the trip is a thimbleful of the awareness and the experience. So imagine the experience like an ocean and you have a thimble. And you're only able to take one thimble thimble full of the experience back because he said it's impossible to describe what a trip is really like it's indescribable and any words we try to use to describe it will certainly fall short but the closest I've ever came across is Sam Harris's video he made about it and I think it's called Sam Harris's mushroom trip or Sam Harris's trip if you're thinking about doing this kind of thing and you've never done it before Listen to that video too. He's a very articulate fellow and I've never heard it quite described that way. And I've done them, but the way he described it was pretty damn cool. So let me know what you think about this video. Uh, do you agree, disagree? Share your experiences with psychedelics below. Good and bad, because I think it's all needed. We all need to hear the experiences. We got to give the accurate portrayal out there of what's going on. Full disclosure, I've never had a bad trip, but I do know people who have had bad trips, and they are not very fun. And usually, people end on bad trips, right? You don't stop doing psychedelics after a good one, normally. You normally would stop after a bad one. So if you had experiences like that, I'd love to hear them too, as would the rest of the audience here too. So with that, thank you for watching. Have a good one.